everyone, I am Tassa, and today I'm going to be going over that small update that you might have seen today. Uh, what the devs do is they actually update the game about a month in advance for all of the events and any kind of patches or anything that they're going to be doing. They update the files just so uh, all of the event weeks will switch over smoothly, and so the actual event patches will uh, go up a little bit quicker since they already take quite a bit of time since they have to go through the servers and make sure everything is stable and everything of that nature. So today I am going to be going over a bunch of spoil spoilers showing how you can get to them if you want to see them yourself on PC and general stuff like that. If you do not want to see any spoilers, I would advise clicking off of this video right now because this video is 100% spoilers for the next month, maybe even further than uh, what's planned for this month. So let's get into it. First, just go into your Steam library. Just click into games on your library. You'll get to this page. Then right click where you have Gems of War and go into properties. From there, go to local files and then browse local files. And here you'll go to res. And then let's go to graphics. There's a couple of places you can go here to check stuff, but we're going to go to graphics first. And then just click three. It's the only option. And the first one you'll notice is there's a bunch of event banners here for the next upcoming event. And this is basically how you see uh, which troops are coming in the upcoming event weeks. As you can see here, there's the Anubite one, which is the current one, which is ending this week. So they still have to keep in the files since it's still in the game. And uh, here are the upcoming four. You can see there's like some elves for... Um, Dull carry. There's like a dwarf and a human for uh, Stormheim. There's some kind of divine thing and a little um, bird for um, Divinion Fields. And Blade of the Land is finally getting its eighth and then ninth troop. So we'll, uh, this is the last kingdom that will be level five. Uh, currently, this is the only kingdom that can't be level five. So hopefully, this will come soon. And that's basically all of those. Um, if you click over, well, first, all of these are a bunch of assets from the game which are really good for, I use these quite a bit to make like thumbnails and stuff like that. And they're pretty useful if you need a pull from them for anything. Uh, most of them are there. There's actually quite a few that aren't here. Even though I have uh, hidden files uh, on, I have no clue where they are. But there's actually some files here that aren't shown that are in the game, but aren't in the files for some reason. So I'm pretty sure those are the other file format because there's two file formats in here. There's the normal PNG ones, which just have the normal... Uh, background and they're really easy to open and there's some other really weird formatted one which are basically impossible to open so that's probably where the rest of the assets are for this game anyways uh, if you click over the troops you can actually see all of the troops that are uh, for the game you can even see like here are some of the new ones the bird thing and the um, this divine blue ice I don't even know it's something for divinity fields no clue what it does um, so yeah that's all of that and if you click over to um, spells as well they're actually usually more organized as far as when they will come out. So if we go all the way to the bottom here, we can see, like, um, here are a bunch that came with all the glacial peaks. It's nice and organized. And then there are events. And then um, all of the mythics you can see here. There's war. There's the plague, which I'll be showing in a second. Uh, it's actually the next mythic that's coming in the game. There's uh, famine. And this is probably war. I mean, not war, probably death. We don't know that for sure, but based on the skeleton and the fact that that's the only other mythic icon here, that is probably death's icon. Then it just goes back into events. And then uh, there was the Anubite one, which was the most recent. And then there was this one, which almost looked like it was supposed to come later than that one, but they switched to order. And then you can see here, uh, there are the rest of the kingdoms that are coming with those three uh, things that I just showed in the previous one. The two, the two, and the two which were just from the uh, icons right um, over here. And yeah, that's pretty much all of it for here that is useful if you ever want to use it just for fun. I know sometimes people in the forums make funny um, little uh, images out of the uh, files and stuff like that. And uh, let's go into one of the more important files. Uh, actually, I'll do that a little bit later. Let's go into the actual game because uh, lately they've actually been leaking some of the troops into the game before they're supposed to. They're going to be fixing that soon. But for right now, we can actually see some of the troops that aren't supposed to be in the game right now. If the game would load, there we go. So if we go over to um, troops, click uh, show all, and now we start going to places. Like we know uh, Divinion Fields was one. For some reason, Divinion's Field isn't showing it, but everywhere else is. So let's go to Apocalypse. We can see the next mythic already, Plague. It decreases a random skill on all enemies by 10. That might be increased by magic too, so that's going to be really, really high for later game players. 
Um, because that'll be 11 once we get um, uh, Blighted Lands upgraded. And it does uh, twice as much damage to Disease, which works really well since it does Disease all the enemies. It has Impervious, which is going to be really, really, really overpowered soon. Because I'm about to show you something in about like a couple minutes in the files that this is just going to be the most ridiculous trait in the game probably. And Aspect of Plague, which is a really, really good trait. It's Moloch's trait, except twice as much. It, uh, enemies lose uh, two skill points every time it does four or five times matches. So getting like three plagues and maybe a Valkyrie with it, that's probably a legitimate team. <laughs> That will be good. Of course, getting three plagues is going to be, like, impossible. I just still only have uh, one famine, and just getting one uh, plague is going to be extremely difficult. But that is uh, Plague. He's actually one of my uh, favorite, myth <coughs> favorite mythics that are probably going to be in the game. Uh, one thing to note, though, is if a newer player does get this, anyone, like, below level 200-ish, uh, he might not be too good, because you're going to need his two traits. And his two traits are going to cost a ridiculous amount of arcane trait stones. So he's going to be a little bit hard to trait. And also with his magic, if, if this is scaling like exactly on magic, that means without any magic or leveling, he's only at uh, a two reduction. Of course, he's going to be gaining more magic through his uh, actual leveling. He's at level one right now. So um, no clue what his actual magic will be. But it does seem a little bit low. It might just be because he's on level one. I'm not going to go check the actual stats that he gains. I'm going to keep that for a secret for now. Mostly because I actually don't know how to do myself. I know uh, Lyle, who updates the troop list, knows how to do it. And that's how she gets all of the troop list updated as soon as everything comes out. Anyways, let's go on to the rest of the troops. Uh, we still show all on, which you need uh, enabled to be able to see these. And let's go to the next one, which was from Stormheim. Stormheim, we can see these two. Uh, this guy is a little bit weird. Uh, he deals 50 damage to an enemy, and that doesn't seem to be scaled off of magic. That just seems to be a static 50. They may change that when he actually comes out. And then he uh, dies. <laughs> so he does 50 to an enemy and then dies. And he is obviously one since he can, dies as he casts it. And it's pretty expensive to cast. And uh, for the most part, uh, Impervious is good. But for the most part, I don't really see a use for him unless something like a Revive comes in this game, which it might. There might be a revive. I know the devs were talking about it a while back that they might add a revive mechanic. We already see with Inferno King, he has a 25% chance to revive. So that's kind of already a revive mechanic in the game. But as far as him, uh, in his current state, I don't see this troop as being useful. Uh, maybe for the impervious, but uh, dwarves are already pretty weak. Stormheim only has like two or three dwarves. So you won't really need him that much. His mana cost is ridiculously high, but that's mostly because 50 damage is a lot of damage. Early game, he might be good since... He's a one-shot, but you might as well just use Valkyrie for how much he costs. Because he's not going to be giving you any souls or anything like that. So you pretty much don't need him. Maybe get a few of him for the red-yellows if he needs something to upgrade. But other than that, you don't really need the troop that much. Maybe just for fun to play around with him to instant kill something on an enemy team. But that's about it. And this other guy is actually... The common is actually a little bit more useful than the ultra rare. He creates six... I mean six. Eight blue gems and then gains attack based on his um, magic. Or I think it's based on his magic. <laughs> I don't know, can't quite tell which one scales since it's um, 8, <laughs> so it could be either. I'm pretty sure it is attack, though, because they've pretty much removed all the scaling from um, from gems. So he's brown, so um, not too bad a troop. He's immune to frozen, has chilling touch. Uh, not the best of troops, but if you needed a blue spawner to go with your, uh, where is it? With your Valkyrie, you can have both Valkyrie and uh, this guy here, your North Ender. And uh, they don't have any mana conflict. Plus, you'll be gaining uh, a bunch of blues. So that combination might actually work well. Plus, uh, having both Valkyrie and a North Render in your team will give you plus two HP to all your troops. Even more if you put even more Stormheim in your uh, deck. So uh, let's go into the final one that's shown. And that is uh, Blighted Lands. Click over here. And I like how they did a Hellcat instead of a Hellhound. <laughs> uh, the Hellcat... Um, transforms the selected mana color to red, so that's pretty good. And then deals damage to a random enemy that's based on magic, of course, and would scale based on um, uh, probably how many reds are converted, or maybe it doesn't. I don't see any kind of scaling here, but they normally don't put it in until it actually goes live. Uh, Trait-wise, it's, uh, it's actually a daemon, too, which is kind of interesting. So, uh, unfortunately, Inferno King, will, if you have Inferno King, would be a much better uh, placement than to have this guy in your team. But it's a good alternative if you don't. He has that Daemon Bond, immune to burning, not too much, and a flame. 
Uh, it's okay, traits. You're better off with Inferno King if you have it, but uh, it is a nice little convert if you need a quicker uh, cast in Inferno King. And this other one um, is actually the first uh, troop in the game, I believe, to have Plague Touch, because that, I've never actually seen that icon before. I don't believe any other um, troop has Plague Touch. Like, if I touch in uh, Plague Touch... Yeah, it's the only troop in the game right now, or as soon as it comes in, that actually has Plague Touch. And all it does is, uh, it does disease on skull damage, kind of like ones that have burn or poison or anything like that. Whenever it does skull damage, it diseases the enemy. Disease uh, cuts the uh, amount of mana a uh, troop gains by half. So it's basically like half a silence. They really need to like buff it so it like reduces a stat every turn or something. That would go really good with um, uh, that Plague guy too. What was his name? I already forget his name. Yeah, plague. <laughs> it was just plague. And why did I click Broken Spire? Anyways, Blighted Lands. Oh, it's basically just a disease troop, a really cheap disease troop. If you want to have it in your uh, team, uh, deals damage to an enemy, then diseases them. Uh, okay, stats probably gains quite a bit of attack. It seems like something that would gain attack, and only seven mana cost, and um, it has immune to disease as well as doing disease. So uh, maybe if uh, famine, I mean famine, if plague ever becomes really popular, it might actually be able to comment some, uh, counter it some. Uh, uh, troops with like disease immunity and stuff like that because uh, you don't really need immune to disease It's probably actually one of the worst immunities in the game right now But anyways, that's all of the files now or all of the troops that are actually shown in the game now for some really really interesting stuff That has been added to the files today, which I want to show which is probably game-changing and probably in this next patch coming up So we're going to go over to uh, we're right here. We're all the way back go into res go into text Go into uh, the English or whatever language you use. It probably has it in all of them. And then go into the world text right here. Open it with anything that will just read it. I'm using uh, Dreamweaver. You can use any kind of uh, text editor and it'll open it. And now there's quite a few interesting ones. First, let's go all the way down. And we'll actually be able to see uh, where to go. Uh, where to go? Steel. There it is. Uh, Death's uh, trait right here. Steal two life from the first enemy at the start of each turn. So uh, that's what uh, Plague is current. Um, I mean, what Plague. What Death's trait is probably going to be. It might be scaled up to three, so it's in line with um, with uh, Famine. But it is Steal, so he's actually taking that two life and then giving it to himself. Which works pretty good with his ability, because he does have um, a ability that uh, goes with it. He, well, I'll show, show it in a second. But uh, before I go over, uh, over to that, there's quite a few other um, things that are mentioned here. For one, we can see that there is a new status effect of web. I don't know where in the files yet. I haven't found it where it says what web does. But there is a new status effect of web, as well as immunity to it, plus two times skull damage to it, all that stuff, as well as a stun. So those are going to be two new effects coming probably within the next month or two whenever they start updating the game again which is probably soon since this has been added to the files so web and stun are new status effects coming eventually and what's really really nice here or nice some people might hate it uh, but it needed to happen there are two extremely game-changing uh effects that are being added one is immunity to devour the Great Maul, that is the biggest nerf that can ever be done to the Great Maul without even touching him. Immunity Devour is going to be, basically make Great Maul uh, not the most overpowered troop ever in existence. And if you notice here, there's something else being fixed. Immunity to Mana Burn. If you have a full team with Impervious and Immunity to Mana Burn, they are going to take no damage at all from a Queen Mab. So those are two extremely game-changing effects there, the Indigestion and Mana Shield. Also, with uh, these two new status effects, as well as the new status effects that are coming in the game, um, Impervious, <clears throat> Impervious is going to be really, really strong now if Impervious does indeed have immunity to all of these. Because, um, well, Impervious is going to be immune to all of them, so <laughs> there's really nothing that you're going to be able to touch with that. And now that Mana Burn can't even do damage to it, you can't devour it, Impervious is, might quite possibly be one of the best traits in the game which is what's going to make plague pretty good too since it's likely the only uh mythic that's going to have impervious so that's all that but there's also uh one additional thing that is coming in this game that is quite interesting uh let me see if i can find it i'm typing in something that i know around the area where it might be uh da, 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 da. well there's uh let's see down find next 
The only problem with these, it is really hard to navigate this files. But there should be more than one. Oh, well, let me type in uh, 50 damage to try finding where that one thing was. Okay, so if we go down a little bit more here. Actually, we can see some of the uh, abilities that weren't shown here. Uh, where to go? Uh, Winter Fury, we already saw that in the text file. Uh, hard Strike, informative. we saw that too. Uh, what is this one? Shred, deal one damage to in disease him. We saw that too. And here we go. Uh, we can see the two from um, the Vinian Fields that I didn't mention earlier. Uh, one of them, the Astral Burst, which is probably that uh, blue-looking one that I showed earlier, removes all gems of a chosen color, then deals uh, true damage to the first enemy boosted by gems removed. So it seems like another true damage troop. We don't know what his traits are, but that seems uh, pretty nice. Probably will go very well synergizing with other true damage teams. Might even be good with Orion since he has a 75% chance to do uh, true damage on skull damage um, whenever if you have his um, last trait. And that little bird thing has the stomp ability, deals one da or deals damage to an enemy and then stuns them. So uh, whenever that comes in, there will probably be an update before this one comes in because that's uh, introducing the new stun mechanic that isn't in the game yet. So that means this will probably be the last one of the three that I showed that's actually going to be coming into the game, which would make sense based on the order. But there are some more interesting things. As you see here, there's a bunch of uh, abilities here that aren't, um, that don't have anything here. They're just TBD as in to be announced or to be determined, I mean. Um, but if you count them out, there's actually 16 here, which means eight and eight which means uh, both of these are likely a new kingdom that are coming into the game. It almost looks like something from a Game of Thrones thing. So if you start reading some of these, you can see uh, Blade, uh, Thrust, Orpheus's Will, Shadow Blade, Crown of Aina. It almost looks like a knight, like almost like kingdom thing, almost like Sword's Edge in a way. And if you go over to this, something I've been wanting since this game started, you can see Hatch, Tiny Fireball, Dragon Sting, Hawkeye, Dragon Strike, this is almost 100% a all dragon kingdom, or pretty much an all dragon kingdom. I've been wanting that since like probably like January of 2015 since this game came out, and that's going to be absolutely amazing. So we're getting kind of like a uh, kingdom, like uh, fortress castle thing with knights and kings and stuff like that, and then an all dragon kingdom. So those two are probably going to come around the same time, if not a, during the exact same patch. So that is going to be uh, a lot of fun to have those. And let me see if I can find Def's ability. I know it was in here. And, uh, of course, I showed uh, at the beginning of the ability how you can actually... Uh, here it is. How you can actually check these. Um, what Def does whenever it comes in is it places Def Mark on all enemies. Everyone saw that coming. Uh, anything named Def and Def Mark in the game, it was obviously going to do this. So that's going to be really interesting. And on top of that, it deals damage to an enemy boosted by life. If you recall from what I said earlier... Its trait steals, uh, its final trait steals two life from an enemy, at, from the first troop at the start of each turn. So that's going to be boosting his life, which is also going to be boosting his ability since it is uh, raised by life. Uh, depending on how his manas are, uh, he might actually be really good with Emperina since I'll be giving it a uh, life plus full healing it. So Emperina might actually be uh, really good in the game again. It hasn't really gotten many use since Bull Taurus doesn't really do much damage anymore. So it might be interesting if an Emperina um, death uh, combination works really well together. But that's pretty much it for the spoilers. Uh, if you want any more spoilers, you can try going through all these files and finding them. They're all here somewhere, probably. And I hope this was helpful. I hope I spoiled enough. This is basically the next month or so, maybe a little bit longer, because uh, as you saw with the To Be Determined, you don't even know what they're doing with these yet. So um, this might actually be longer than a month before these kingdoms come in. But that's pretty much everything. Leave a like if you found this to be helpful, and I'll see you in the next video. Also, uh, as I mentioned, I probably won't be uploading for a few days. This was just a um, rare occasion for breaking from this because I do have a little bit of time this morning, plus um, uh, this was pretty big. And I know some of you have been wanting me to make spoiler videos lately. So I figured since it just happened like a couple hours ago, I figured I'd spoil all of this for us. And yeah, goodbye everyone.